Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, glad to be up to get up and speak on uh, the changes that we're making to marketing of wheat and barley in Western Canada. Uh, the member from LPAC just speaking, and he's had the opportunity his entire farming career to be able to market outside of the Canadian Wheat Board because of his location in this country. Unfortunately, my constituents and my family have never had that opportunity to go out there and capitalize on the market situations that are in not only domestically but around the world and take advantage of those opportunities and put those dollars directly into their own uh, pockets. You know, this has been an extremely divisive issue in my riding the Selkirk Interlake. A lot of that is because of the fear and smear that's been spread by the opposition and by the Wheat Board directors themselves. Exactly. And, you know, it, it's really unfortunate because we market all sorts of other crops and oil seeds and we don't have these types of divisive debates over whether or not you have the right to sell your own product. It is completely unacceptable that in a democracy that individuals in a certain region of Canada do not have property rights of their own personal property, that they are subjected to an organization that's been empowered by the Government of Canada to take away their production and market it for them, whether they like it or not. You know, as I said, this is a divisive issue. And in my riding, and I have many friends, I am a farmer myself, though I've never been a wheat farmer, and I must, uh, you know, put that out there right now, I am a cattle producer. However, my family does uh, grow uh, uh, wheat and barley and other commodities. But I have to say that this has been a divisive issue, and, and as I have said throughout uh, this whole debate, that I have some of my friends that support the monopoly of the Wheat Board. I have some of my friends that are against this, uh, the monopoly. And on this issue, I stand with my friends. <laughs> now, <laughs> what I'm meaning by that, Mr. Speaker, is that, you know, both of them, on both sides of this issue, they have things that are important to them from a personal uh, perspective. And when I went out and campaigned and, and uh, talked to farmers over the last several years since I've been a member of Parliament and before that when I was in farm politics for, for several years, we've always made the point that the Wheat Board in its new format has to be there for those producers who still want to collectively market their product, who want to pool their resources. And this legislation does just this. Now, my family, uh, my father and my brother, are, are farmers, and they're organic producers. And because they grow organic crops, the wheat board has never been a viable option for them to truly capitalize on the market opportunities that exist in the organic industry. They can sell directly their oats, their flax, their organic canola, but when it comes down to wheat, they have to sell through the wheat board. And so for years, my father and my brother have not grown organic wheat because the premiums that are out there in the marketplace are removed from them and subjected into the pool. And so they can never profit from it. However, there is the buyback option. I know the member from Alpex is going to jump up and say, well, they can buy it back. Well, they can buy it back at the price that they're being offered in the marketplace. They sell it at as a commodity price to the wheat board and, and then buy it back at the premium value as an organic commodity. So there is absolutely no advantage absolutely no advantage of being able to move that market directly to the consumer. It is wrong. Now, for those producers in my riding and across Western Canada who want to be involved in the Canadian Wheat Board, this legislation provides them with a great opportunity. The government is still going to uh, support the new voluntary Wheat Board. Mr. Speaker, the government is underwriting the pool accounts. The government is still going to help set initial prices. The Canadian Wheat Board Fund is going to be moved over into the new organization, the new voluntary Canadian Wheat Board. The producer cars that the Wheat Board always took credit for are still going to remain with the Canadian Grain Commission, who will ensure that the allocation of producer cars are available to farmers who want to ship directly. And, Mr. Speaker, I'm a huge fan of the Port of Churchill and we're going to make sure that the Port of Churchill receives up to $5 million per year over the next five years wow. to help them uh, deal with any losses that they might incur if, if there is a reduction in the amount of volume of wheat and barley that is shipped up through the Port of Churchill. Uh, but more importantly, the Port of Churchill's future is going to depend upon the voluntary Canadian Wheat Board making use of that port 
and opening up new railway opportunities, such as the Hudson Bay Rail Line uh, in northern Saskatchewan, that right now the, the CN uh, Rail is, is abandoning. That line has been out of service for about 20 years, and unfortunately it hasn't moved grain from northern Saskatchewan into the Wheatboard position you know, at, at, at uh, the Port of Churchill. And that in itself is a savings of $7 per tonne in shipment for each and every farmer in northern Saskatchewan if they can capitalize through the wheat board on making use of the Port of Churchill. Now, it's interesting to see these guys have been talking about democracy, and, and uh, my, my colleague from, from York and Melville just made this, this point about the wheat board plebiscite, is that you question, first of all, on that plebiscite, whether or not every producer had the right to, to exercise a vote in that plebiscite. So many producers over the last 10 years have walked away from the wheat board and growing alternative commodities so they don't have to deal with the wheat board. Those individuals, those farmers, were never given an opportunity to vote. The other thing that is really skewed in the, in the whole process, Mr. Speaker, is that we never had all the, the opportunities or all the possibilities on that ballot. It says, do you support the monopoly of the Canadian wheat board, yes or no? It never, ever mentioned do you support a voluntary Canadian Wheat Board? And I can tell you that if you talk to most of those producers that support the Canadian Wheat Board on that plebiscite question, most of them would also tell you that they would support a voluntary Canadian Wheat Board, especially one that has the built-in safety net that we're providing from the Government of Canada. So we don't have a clear question. We don't know who really got the chance to vote. Not everybody got an opportunity who are in the agriculture industry that farm today were given that opportunity to Thank vote in the plebiscite. And we know that the fundamentals of democracy, the one thing that is, uh, is true here in the House of Commons, is that we respect the minority position. We don't go out there and, because we won government, make every Canadian and everybody in the House of Commons become a conservative. No, we don't do that because we've got to have a robust opposition. However, under the Wheat Board plebiscite, it's all or nothing, according to the Canadian Wheat Board Board of Directors. It's all or nothing. That means that every farmer, whether they support the Wheat Board or not, have to become a component of the Wheat Board monopoly, or some people might say dictatorship. That is not the right way to do business. And aside from respecting the minority position, of farmers in Western Canada. There's a whole issue of the respect for personal property rights. That is a key fundamental value of any democracy anywhere in the world. Now, Mr. Speaker, aside from, you know, the questions around the plebiscite, the questions around whether or not producers want or don't want a monopoly or a volunteer wheat board, we got to look at this also from the whole aspect of agronomics. The dollars, the opportunities, and the increased values of products that can be produced in the prairie region. You know, we're going to have farmers finally allowed to make true market-based decisions on what they can find in the marketplace. They're going to, under this act now, they have the opportunity to go out there through freedom and contract directly with buyers, with processors, grow the exact varieties that they need. I hear from molsters, I hear from millers, that they would love to purchase and, and, and contract directly with farmers to grow certain varieties. Through the wheat board process, that is extremely limited. You know, this is also going to be able to engage farmers who have opted out of the, the, the monopoly through the wheat board. They can now re-enter the marketplace because they have the freedom they have the ability, first and foremost, to market and risk manage their own commodities. They do it already with their oil seeds. They do it already with their other uh, coarse grains. They do it already with their pulse crops and other specialty crops. So now they can take that experience, that expertise, and apply it to growing wheat, marketing wheat, marketing barley for export. They can contract specific varieties, forward contracts, specific months of delivery, pricing options, basis options, with the various companies that are out there. This is going to provide more value-added uh, value activity. We're already seeing that with the announcement of the new uh, Durham milling plant in Regina. And we know we've already experienced this right in Manitoba, in my home province, when we took oats outside of the wheat board, we brought in can oat milling set up 
They immediately uh, developed a, a great mill and have increased the number of acres of oats grown in Manitoba by over 250,000 acres. You know, and that's just one plant having that type of impact in one province. So, you know, the agronomics is great. It's good for crop rotations. People can make better decisions that way. So, Mr. Speaker, just in closing, let me just say this. This has been a div divisive issue. But, you know, all the farmers out there, their friends, their neighbours, they don't have these types of battles over their other commodities. And at the end of the day, they'll still be friends and neighbours with a voluntary Canadian wheat board. Questions and comments? Uh, the Honourable Member for Malpac.